Welcome to the We Buy Houses podcast with our host, Brian Spitz, president of Big State Home Buyers, leading the seamless approach to real estate investing in Houston since 2005. Brian's specialty in this large wholesale operation is facilitating real estate solutions for people wanting to sell quickly. Each week, we discuss the ins and outs of wholesale real estate investing and related topics by professionals who matter. And now, here's Brian. Good morning. I'm Brian Spitz, president of Big State Home Buyers, and today we have a guest, Scott Yokely with Bright Star Home Healthcare. And Scott is here to visit with us first about um, how to prepare your home for an aging senior. Um, so, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Brian, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So, tell us a little bit about your facility and what it is that you do. Well, Bright Star uh, is a provider of in-home medical and non-medical home care for uh, private pay clients, or and we also staff uh, for contract supplemental staffing to facilities. So, we provide caregivers and nursing in the home primarily. Okay. And Bright Star is a franchise, so it's a national company. Correct. I, I'm one of the owners of about probably 150 owners with 250 locations, and I am the owner for the Sugarland, Katy, West Houston territories. Okay. Do you service the whole city of Houston, but are really just that west part? I'm actually one of four owners okay. uh, that cover the Houston area. We have uh, okay. an office in the Woodlands, downtown, and Friendswood as well. So together we manage the Houston area. All right, good. So uh, what are the advantages of it being a, a franchise? I, I would imagine that there would be some comfort level for your clients to know that it's a, a higher repeated corporate structure. Yeah, the combination. Than, you know, an individual person you hire to come sit with your family. Absolutely, I think you know the combination of a national brand that brings mm -hmm. rigor and structure to our quality and compliance and uh, and oversight is, is a big feature. But also being a franchise, locally owned, uh, you know, me as the owner going into the home and talking with folks and being accessible um, is a huge uh, advantage and uh, very comforting to families who are dealing with the type of service that we deal with. Right. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your average client. Who, who's your who's the person that's going to hire you to your company to come help their their family? Well, and we, our capability we have we cover a very wide variety because with Bright Star, what makes us really unique is we do both the non medical, which means caregiving, personal care, companion care, uh, those type of services you might normally think of as home care, but we also provide kid care, backup care for parents, okay. as well as uh, the nursing skilled nursing care for folks who need that. Uh, so we cover everything. The, a large portion though I think that we had been talking about was the elder population obviously, seniors uh, or folks with disabilities uh, is probably the biggest facet and, and when you're talking about seniors you know our typical client might average in 70, 80s uh, in that age bracket but we we have some in, in every category. All right. Well, uh, what we were going to talk about first today was how to prepare the home, you know, for if you have an aging, um, aging seniors or, um, you know, when is the right time to start preparing the home and what kind of alterations do you suggest? By the time you get to someone's home, have they already prepared it or do you make suggestions for uh, their needs? Uh, we see both scenarios. Uh, there are times we're brought in where families are very well versed and they've done a lot to, to make the home safer for typically their parent, um, but we also go in and the folks have made no accommodations. It's brand new to them. They're they're not they don't understand exactly the the uh, potential issues they could deal with. So we have to do a lot more instruction. We always go through with our clients and walk through the house and talk about it, and we just find some need a lot more guidance than others. Right. So give us some uh, ideas or some common things that you suggest that make a home safer for an elderly person. The, there's a few key uh, components. First of all, um, you have to look at it from different angles. First of all, is there anything going on with the individual that might make them more vulnerable to falls? We're talking right. medical issues. You know, have you had conversations with their doctor? Um, are they prone to dizzy spells suddenly where maybe before they were not? Um, is there an underlying medical condition that could make them more uh, potential risk, fall risks? Um, are they under medications that might make them uh, more uh, 
woozy, make them lose their balance more, are the things that can contribute to it. Those are, those are key components. But then you also have the environment, which is, I think, what you're getting to. Is there's, it, are, are there things in the home that make it safer or less safe? And, and there's a variety of things, simple things like handrails in, in, mm -hmm. the, in the bathroom for the, around the shower, both inside and outside the shower. That's a key one, because obviously, um, it's when people are at their most vulnerable, it's wet, slippery, and their right. balance may be uh, compromised as it is. Uh, typically, you know, it, are the, is there, you know, throughout the whole house, you have to look at is there clutter, are there clean, accessible pathways that they can walk through the home? Are there transition areas going up and down steps? Do they have handrails on both sides of the steps? Um, you know, in the kitchen, do they have to reach up for things? Right. Are things or do they have to lean over and get things under cabinets? These are all very practical and very common sense when you look at it. But the reality is, if you're vulnerable and you don't, your balance is compromised and and you're not 100%. All those things make things just a little bit riskier. And and obviously, the big issue of falling is that's you know that's the biggest contributor to someone right. having to go in the hospital or having an additional condition because mm -hmm. of it um, because of their state. So. There's, there's a checklist, for example, we have that we go through, and it goes through each room's, you know, ev covers everything from where the light cords. Um, okay. You know, can they turn on a light before they enter a room? Uh, these are, these, this is just some examples of the list we go through that may seem common sense, but when you get an outside party coming in looking at it, you get a fresh look and an objective view. And are you able to provide the installation, or do you have people that you recommend to your clients that help make the house? Uh, ready? Well, we don't personally do the accommodations. We don't install handrails uh, right. because there's a variety of things you can do. But we basically provide resources for folks, connect them to contractors that specialize in that. Um, because there's, a, you can do a lot or a little, um, but there's some basic things that uh, make a lot of sense. And there's things people can do on their own as well that, that's totally fine. And so what, um, for people that may not be at a stage where they need home health care or people that can't necessarily afford home health care, what are a few suggestions you would offer? The, the major ones in, in the theme is always going to be about communication, okay. whether probably any topic you're going to cover. Uh, the, with your family, with your physician, is to communicate about what are the risks. To utilize resources like on the Bright Star website to get our checklist or from a variety you know, of internet resources or physicians, um, uh, diminishing fall risks. There's right. a lot of resources and things that people can do on their own um, by the, some of the things I mentioned that can help. Uh, but it's communication between the family, the individual in the home, uh, as well as the physicians, uh, all talking together and basically putting the fall risk topic on the table and saying, how do we address this? even before it happens because that's the best time to address it as you can imagine. Once you've had a fall, yes, another fall is dangerous, but you've already, you've already become more vulnerable because of it. Right. It, um, and tell us your website. How can people look that up? It's brightstarcare.com and you can actually get to the fall prevention by brightstarcare.com slash range of care slash elderly fall prevention. But right. if you go into our brightstarcare.com and type in fall prevention, it'll route you to it. The blog section has several good articles on fall prevention as well, if you go to the website. Yeah, I've checked your website out and it's really easy to navigate real clean and real, uh, it's a really good site, really informative. Um, at Big State Home Buyers, we buy houses and the, you know, we buy quickly, we close fast, and we buy them as is. And buying from people who have aged out of the house or people who have passed away is, uh, by far our largest demographic of clients. So we see properties that have been, you know, made ready for elderly people and properties that haven't and people that have taken care of their estate planning and people that haven't. And so I know from all the people I've dealt with over time that things like a conversation about falling are not comfortable conversations. Either the parents don't want to talk about it, the kids don't want to bring it up, and it's uh, essential, you know, both for safety and for uh, state planning that you have diff the difficult conversations. At what point do you think a child or a loved one needs to come to the, uh, sit down and have this, these kinds of conversations with a parent or family member? Uh, you, you know, there's no, no times 
early enough has it, it, been my experience. And I, I found through talking with folks and through my own experience that actually having the conversations before an issue ever comes up, while maybe your parent is totally independent and, and, and uh, perfectly fine taking care of themselves and don't need any assistance at all, is actually could be the best time to talk about, hey, how would you like things to work if one day you're not uh, able to do as much as you are today? Because that person can speak theoretically about right. what they want to happen and they don't feel like they're being uh, judged right at that moment right. that, uh, that, that they can't do something. Because it's a difficult topic. No one wants to give up their independence. Nobody wants to feel like they need to be helped. Right. Um, but forcing an uncomfortable conversation is, is worth it sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, because when it happens and you're unprepared and you don't know what to do, as, it, as you well know in many facets of, the, uh, of, of life, it just makes things much more difficult and challenging, and then you're guessing at what the, what, uh, the family member might have wanted. Right. Well, Scott, um, this again has been Scott Yokley with Bright Star Home Healthcare, and I'm Brian Spitz with Big State Home Buyers, and we've been covering uh, how to make the home safe and a little bit about home health care. So, uh, thank you very much for being with us today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me, Brian. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. You've been listening to We Buy Houses with your host, Brian Spitz, president of Big State Home Buyers. Don't forget to visit our website, bigstatehomebuyers.com, for more information on how to sell your house. We pay $500 for referrals, so tell your friends too. 